Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, if I'm a little bit of a fanboy today, it's because the great Brad Leland is in studio. I'm a huge Friday Night Lights fan, but you'll know him from literally hundreds of others, television and, and movies. His journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Okay, I have to confess, I'm a little bit of a fanboy right now because Brad Leland is in studio. And Brad, if, you, if you're not a Friday Night Lights fan, I urge you just go and, and, and rent it. You will find yourself obsessed as, with it as, as I do. Um, but Brad, uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. My pleasure. It's yeah. great to be here. Well, we were introduced through a, a mutual friend. And uh, as soon as I found out that Brad was going to be in studio, I started to get, a, I started to get giddy. And my, my staff is all wanting to... Uh, <laughs> Take pictures with Brad. Brad, take us back to the beginning. So I gotta uh, say, I gotta say hi to Sweet Caroline because you call her something else. But Sweet Caroline and I did a, a play together years and years ago, and we've been dear friends ever since. The girl you just talked about. No kidding. Reese. Wow. Her name is Caroline. She, but she, she's Reese. Sorry. Uh, she's Reese Caroline. McCormick. Yeah, and uh, she's and, an awesome actress and person. And, and she's going to be on the show tomorrow, so she's cool. got a tough act to follow. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> right, you, you just told me before uh, we went on the air that your very first role was a little television show you probably heard of called Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so t it was already a hit show by the time you're auditioning for a, a role. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had just come out of the theater world, and I'd been on Greenville Avenue working as a club manager at a place called Nick's Uptown, which a lot of you are going to remember. Probably the greatest nightclub ever in Dallas. We had live music, had everyone in the world. But I'd just come off of that. And um, that's when uh, Dallas, I, I did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I played uh, Mac Murphy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in a little theater down uh, called uh, Calm Eddie's down in Deep Ellum. And this agent saw me do Mac Murphy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And um, and he said, do you, do you want to do film and TV? And of course I did and I had planned to, I just had not gotten an agent yet. And I really hadn't started dealing with that. And I said, yes. And so he got me uh, in to see the casting directors, uh, all the ones that were around this region. And, and Dallas, you know, it was great for all of us here because we, all these Dallas actors, uh, you know, we're suddenly a screen actor skill. We all, all join right to work state. So, you know, we're all in the, late twenties and early thirties were, you know, those of us that were that at that time. And, uh, and we joined the union and started working on Dallas, which was the biggest TV show in the world at all time, except for MASH. Oh, absolutely. I think Dallas, the last, if you can imagine this, Jeff, the last episode of MASH, I think beat out Dallas, but the last episode of Dallas had something like 400 million viewers on a Friday night worldwide. Unbelievable. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. So that was a great job for us at the time to, to get to come in year after year and play different characters on Dallas. And that's where I, I got my start. And, and uh, <clears throat> he has such a good reputation in the film and uh, television business that, you know, one show uh, begets another show. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put on the screen your IMDb. And as we start to scroll down it, this is only a 20 minute show. I don't think we have time to scroll down the whole list. I mean, when you look at that, uh, what goes through your mind? Oh, uh, Hancock, that's Peter Berg, uh, Will Smith, and co of course, uh, and then my good buddy, I just did Big Sky with with Reba, my good buddy Rex Lynn, and, and then Last Man Standing. Wow. I mean, it goes on yeah, forever. It, it, yeah, it makes me think of <laughs> Tim, working with Tim on Last Man Standing. It was a blast. My agent said, you, uh, he goes, yeah, I want you to do this sitcom. I said, I, I, sitcom? And I thought, I don't know if I want to do a sitcom. He goes, no, Brad, this is a good sitcom and you're going to like it. It's, it's kind of like theater because you rehearse all week and then you do the show in front of a live audience. And I knew sort of what it was, but I had not done that style. 
And so I got there and it was cool because it's like you like you make a play, like you build a play. You built that show. And every day the, the producers and the writers would sit there and watch you and they would rewrite the show because it has to get down to that exact minute. It's a 30 minute wow. show. So it has to. And so the lines and everything has to get really succinct. And they keep making it better. They keep changing the lines and changing the blocking right down to the day. Mm -hmm. And then you do it in front of a live audience, which is the cool thing for an actor, of course, to be in front of a live audience. But they've got six cameras, not just a couple. This is a big show. So we got to do that with Tim and, and go through that experience, and I ended up loving it. And the wow. character was fun. He was Way out there, but he was fun. Okay. If you think if you think Tim on on Last Man Standing is conservative, you should say my guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was so. Well, we're gonna yeah, spend some time yeah. talking about Friday Night Lights. So many people have told me it's a good show. You got to go back. So I went back and watched the entire thing, and I couldn't believe how great those actors were. Those kids were great. Awesome. Everybody was great because I didn't. I wasn't around for all their scenes. I mean, I did a scene with nearly everybody, but I mean, I was thoroughly impressed and I could understand why people, you know, have still watching it, passing it on. The, it's third generation now. You know, they're old enough to the young ones, the 12 year olds, 14 year olds starting to watch it. And their, their older siblings watch it, their parents watched it. So it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and we're all, <clears throat> we're all lucky, uh, lucky to have caught uh, lightning in a bottle, so to speak. You know. And Brad, you told me that they gave you a tremendous creative freedom on the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pete said in the beginning, and that actually happened in the film. When we did the film, it was the same thing. He brought us in. All the actors were, were the first scene of shooting the film, Friday Night Lights. He brought, it, it, the first scene was at uh, John Autry, I think was his name, Buddy's name at the time, but he was the rich guy, the, the booster. And the very first scene was us having a dinner party at my house, very elegant dinner party for the coach and his new wife and all the booster people. We got to the set at like 7.30 and you get there and you have breakfast and you go to wardrobe and makeup and da, da, da. And then you go to rehearsal and then you start shooting the show. And then you go back to your trailer and then you, you go to work. We got there and all of a sudden the AD came in and they rounded us up and said, all of you, uh, Pete wants you on the set right now. The girls still had curlers in their hair. We had not eaten breakfast. It was like, what? And we, we, he wants us on the set. Yeah, he wants to rehearse. We're all like, hey, we, we just got here. We, but we did it and we got in there and that's when he created it. He said, all right, I want everybody to realize what this is. This is you, this is it, this is whatever you, it's your character what you feel, we have a script here, it's good, but if it's not right, say what you want. So they gave us that freedom in the beginning. Even though NBC had a creative, wonderful team of writers who were writing these beautiful scripts, we still had the leeway as actors to be able to, to go a different way with it. Uh, the scenes still remain pretty much the same. I mean, many times they didn't, but hopefully they and, got better. And what many people yeah. wouldn't know is uh, Brad actually played on a championship team in Plano. Uh, so so how, how much of your character was developed from people that you know or, or experiences that you had? Um, well, I don't know if any of that character really had much to do with that. Um, being able to play for the Plano Wildcats before they were playing your, Plano Senior High, Anyway, we, uh, I, I wasn't able to play in the state game because I'd broken my knee. And so I had a cast up to my knee in those days. And so it's ironic that it happened the way it did in the show because I got to be a part of the team and be a part of a state championship team and not even play. But I was still part of the team. I was the broken guy over there who wasn't good enough anyway. But in the script of Friday Night Lights, when Buddy Jr. comes in, his storyline was to be that he was going to stop being a drug and start being a good kid because he was going to become an athlete and a star, and that was going to be his redemption. Well, it's the first night we started doing the uh, the hitting, and he was out there, and he, he came off the field, and he was so happy because they shot this shot of him doing this thing, playing linebacker, and some giant lineman stepped on his Achilles, ripped his Achilles, and he looked. He was on the ground, and we were all going, oh, man, how bad is it? And he looked up at me, and by that time, we'd had a little bit of a pretty close relationship being father and son, you know, we're friends first, mm -hmm. but, but he never really had a dad too much and I'd never had a son. So it was kind of cool. And I looked at him and I said, man, how are you? And he goes, this is bad. This, and I said, can you lift that? He couldn't flop it. Yeah, I knew. 
And then the trainers came over and they goes, it's Achilles. And they took him immediately. And so we thought, oh, well, he's done. He's off the show. They're going to ride him out. They're going to do something because he, he's going to have to have surgery tomorrow. Well, some people said some things, me included, others who agreed. And we, they rewrote that so that he can be a part of the team even though he's not playing, wow. which happened in my real life, which wow. is ironic and cool. And it made it, it, made it better. Because it showed that you, you don't have to become that stud kid to see what it, it, it's like to be a part of a team, which all of us do. You don't have to be the best. Well, something that Brad told me earlier today, we had a phone call to discuss the show. He said, Jeff, this has gone global. You were in Paris and got recognized? Oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was doing this show, which here it's called The Bureau. Over there, it's called Les Gens de Bureau. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm doing this show and I'm playing the director of the CIA, whose name was You Know Who. They wouldn't give me a name. I just was You Know Who. So when I came in, they spoke English. They'd give me one line so I could, the French would maybe think I understood French, sure. which I didn't at all. But I did understand that when I'm walking down the street, it's in Paris, and it's like a you know very frou frou area, and you know they had me in the wrong place. Anyway, there's models and photographers, world people, young people walking by, and all of a sudden these two French women, buddy Gertie, like, huh? Are you kidding me, buddy Gertie? You? I said, you watch Friday? Oh, everyone watched Friday Night Lights. So the the, the point, Jeff, is that the show became. Worldwide Universal because it's a story about community. It's not a story about Texas high school football. It's a story that all of us can relate to unless we grew up in some giant city that is, you know, that, that doesn't have any sort of community thing that happens. Yes. Which even Brooklyn and they have community things. So everybody can get it. It's a different sport in different countries. You know, it's soccer over here. It's, it's, it's baseball there, but it's still the same thing. It's about community and it's about teamwork. It's about being part of a team. And then of course, everybody grows up in school. Everybody has parents. Everybody has boyfriends and girlfriends. All of those subjects are, you know, I just, I think we're like, I hope it's like a show like Andy Griffith, except we're not that funny, <laughs> but it just lasts forever because there's a story and there's a, there's a thing about it. And it was, uh, it was an all-star cast. If you go back and look at all of these names, uh, you, you know them from, uh, you know, uh, both TV and movies and, and some of these kids that you're, you're meeting are, you know, Michael B. Jordan, for instance. I mean, I, he just exploded. Yeah. Kind of a superstar, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's. So uh, Brad is still very busy. Uh, your career continues to soar. Uh, we're going to talk about one of the films. Uh, I guess it's uh, The Last of Us, which is uh, will you help set the stage for this as we show this um, this trailer. Yeah, I hope it's, I'm sure this is legal. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think it's legal. I, I can't say anything about the story or my character, but being a part of this is tremendous because it'll be the biggest they told me that the that the budget well i don't even know if i can say anything okay except that it, it's an hbo max coming next week original series from a video game the the last of us which evidently they knew they had they had players um all over the world for 400 i don't know how many game players knew this game and loved it. Mm -hmm. So HBO said, hey, let's make a series out of it. So it's a 10 part series with some tremendous actors, a lot of the Game of Thrones people, cast and crew, and uh, giant giant budget. And I, the, wor the word's out, it comes out next week. And so I get to be a part of that. And um, yeah. looking forward to seeing what that's like. Well, it's it's going to get a lot of viewers, I know that. And I know there's only so much you can talk about in, in these new projects. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about Love and Death, which is yeah. based on a, a real event. Yeah, and, and they made a, a, a TV movie here with Brian Dennehy years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, in 1990, it's, it's, it's a story that happened in Wiley, Texas in 1980, an axe murder, Candy Montgomery, and Betty Gores, the, the woman who was murdered, who was her best friend, and they were church ladies and their husbands. They were all families together out in Wiley, and this horrible thing happened, and uh, violent, violent crime, and it was the first time anything had ever happened like that in Wiley, Texas, a small town at the time. And so uh, that 
Labor TV Moves Wait, and Hulu just released a version of it with uh, Jessica Biel. But our version is much, much larger. It's a, uh, it's I believe it's seven parts now, and it's uh, Elizabeth Olsen and then Jesse Plemons, who I got to work with. Which is so again. cool. Jesse Plemons is the lead husband. He is a giant movie star now. I mean, he, he and Michael Jordan are racing to see who can be the top A-lister in the world. And both of them can do whatever they want now. But I got to work with Jesse, and I got to be sitting in rehearsal with him when we were rehearsing this, because I was the chief, chief of police during this crime. And, I'm, and he's a suspect, and I'm rehearsing with him. And that's when the, the crew all burst in. at 7 o'clock in the morning. We're just starting to talk, and we're starting to just, you know, yeah, get ready to do the scene. It's just the three of us, the director and Jesse and I, all of a sudden the whole crew burst in and they announced that Jesse had been uh, nominated for an Oscar. And his wife, of course, both nominated this past year for wow. an Oscar. And it just to see his face and having known him when he was 17 on Friday Night Lights and seeing now he's nominated for an Oscar. And he, he's a great actor and a great guy. Unbelievable. And so is she. I mean, they're just normal, wonderful parents. I have two little boys now. Well, uh, something that really impresses me about you, Brad, you're incredibly grounded, and I'm sure that one of the reasons you're so grounded is uh, you got a good home front. We got some pictures off of Facebook of your bride. Oh, my. <laughs> How long have you been married now? We've only been married, at, I think it's 45. But we got married in 78. What does that mean? There we are, getting married. Yeah, we were 23. I was 23, and she was 22. And those are Taya and Leah, who are now somewhat older. The one on the right, Taya, there they are. Yeah, they, they grow up. Yeah, there's the best thing that ever happened. And, and that has to keep you grounded. I mean, we, uh, it's in, in Hollywood these days, you know, marriages just come and, come and go. And so, uh, you know, talk about having just a, uh, a strong team around you. Exactly. It, it, no way I could have done it without her. Uh, I really owe everything to Freda, and uh, and then she gave me those two daughters, and that it, that'll take away. You can't go mess around too much when you you're a dad with two daughters, and your wife's an actor, and you're both going and doing. So we traded off, but uh, she did a lot more than I did. I, <laughs> she, she, one time, I remember one time she, she goes, "Guess what?" I said, "What?" She goes, "I made more money than you this year." I was like, "All right." <laughs> Not one of those husbands that think oh, I'll make the money. I, you know, it's like, come on, keep writing. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're almost yeah. out of time, and, yeah. and uh, uh, this is kind of a this is your life, uh, Brad Leland. Uh, how do you uh, how do you want to be remembered? Well, I've been thinking about this since I'm 68, but I'm only getting younger. Yeah, and, I, I promise. And, and you got I, a I'm lot of trying to get young. Betty White was acting till she was ninety nine. People, yeah, people say, "Ah, we're getting my buddies. Oh, we're getting old." I am not getting old. Period. I'm not. <laughs> not. Um, I would certainly like to leave a piece of work that was extremely meaningful. I mean, Friday Night Lights is a pretty good thing for a TV show, but I would like to leave a character that that had some pretty serious impact forever uh, and was nothing like me. Maybe just people go, that's not even him. I mean, as an artist, as an actor, whatever it is that I do, I would like to do that as that. But the end thing that's most important to me is that um, somehow, you know, it's so cliche, but somehow we do something good and we bring something good, somehow influence people in a way that might stay around forever, at least in your own family. And if it spreads out, oops, it spreads out farther. And if you spill your water and your ice all over the notes, then that must be the end. I think that's pretty good. I think that's the end. Uh, that's well, I'm saying. impressed. And that's guess, how you end water, your life. I guess you spill everything. And I guess our desk is waterproof. I just it, discovered that. Well, it, 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 right, it seems to be going down in this little gym. We're really, clean it's up going down in. <laughs> all right, we're going we're to get some, uh, some towels in here, and we're going to end with uh, Brad's Facebook page. Oh go ahead gosh. and go on there and, and like and friend uh, Brad. <laughs> thanks Brad, for thanks me, for buddy. coming on the show. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, Brad. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.